Howdy once again, welcome back to the shop. This is Mr. Pete, your original YouTube shop teacher, and this is part six of the restoration, rebuild, repainting of the South Bend 7 inch shaper. So, thank you for watching. Be sure and watch the previous videos. And in this one, I'd like to get some masking done, some cleaning, and some painting on these parts that I uh, disassembled in the last episode. So, watch that as well. So, let's get started. Well, it was way too windy to paint outdoors this morning, so I had to resort to coming in the garage. I don't really like doing that. Also, notice I'm just using a rattle can, and I didn't take it down to bare metal. I mentioned that in another video. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people that are going to say, why didn't you do it right while you were at it? Well, i got to leave something for the next owner to do, but they already got a, a good start on it, so all they got to do is clean a little bit and, and paint it right, but this is good enough. Smoke gray Rust-Oleum. Well, it's another day, and boy did we have a heck of a windstorm in the Midwest last night, so I'm a little bit late getting started here. But I'm working on the top uh, dovetails here, and I'm not going to be scraping. I really do not have that skill. And they're not all that bad, so I'm just doing a real good cleaning with uh, Scotch-Brite and, uh, uh, and my hand and so on, on all of the different dovetails, and there's three in all. And that's going to be good enough, because they do not show that great aware. And remember, this is just for my home shop, so I hope you forgive me for going right through this without a complete restoration.
Well, this is the last surface or side for the main column, so we'll get that all cleaned up, masked, and ready to paint. This brake cleaner along with a scotch bright works great. Well, that cleaned up real nice, and now it is ready to mask and then paint. But let me show you something else. Do you remember in the very first video I said that there was a lot of slop in here and I probably had to rebuild something? Actually, what it was was these two flathead screws, one here and one here, were quite loose. And that caused the whole assembly to uh, wobble. So I tightened those up. I think I might give them another whack now with the impact screwdriver so they don't move. They would be better served with flathead socket head screws. I meant to say flathead cap screws. Better do that before I forget. But I certainly don't want to shear them off. Ta-da! Looking good. Shaking it up here, boss. Well, as I'm preparing this switch box for painting and cleaning it up, note that there is an outlet in the bottom, and that is switched right here, and that is for the light, but it's a very unusual twist lock miniature type of plug, and I do not have, as you know, a decent light for it, but looking here on the other one, there is the plug, and uh, I don't think those are available. As a matter of fact, I've never seen one in that size in my whole life. It's kind of cute actually. Two wire though. Well I'm finally getting down to the last major part and this is called the cross rail and there is an internal dovetail here and an external one right there. At least half of a dovetail. And there's the gib and this lock, gib lock here, for the vertical mov movement is actually a cam, and that's where it presses up against the gib. So let me get these gib screws out of here, and I'll start cleaning it up. I don't believe I'm going to take the nut out of there, although it would be easy enough to do. And I said that it was brass. It's not brass. It's steel. Well, about a half hour in the wash tank and it's uh, cleaned up pretty nicely. Need a little bit of light sanding. But this is the only part that I told you day one that was a concern that there is some corrosion right here. Now it's not red rust, but right there, it must have been parked in that position and a little moisture got on there, but I think it'll clean up all right. As a matter of fact, it's going to have to be good enough. And this looks pretty good. So as soon as I give it a once over here, I'm going to go ahead and paint the inside here red and that's it for today. It's pretty hot and I've already been at it for about six or seven hours.
Well, I painted the cover plate, but naturally I immediately lost one of the little drive pins. Jordan's working right beside me this morning, pouring some decoy molds. Hold one up, Jordan. I finished one. He's having a little problem getting him out of the mold this morning, so if you hear some banging going on, that's what it is. Came out or did a break? No. Good one. Remember when I made that mold in one of my videos? A lot of pleasure in doing something like that, isn't there, Gordon? Yep. There are three places on the castings that still have the original primer on them from the factory and I'm using Rust-Oleum red primer. Not quite as red as the old, it's more brown, but that's what they're using now. I just about got this completely masked and ready to paint. Just got to cover that area and really this is the last piece to paint. I don't believe I've missed any others other than the vice. Now there will be lots and lots of still pictures at the end of this video. Well I believe this is the very last piece that I have to paint. It's all masked and ready to go. And to be honest with you, I'm glad that I'm about done painting. Well, that just about wraps up this episode of the South Bend Shaper. Let's do a little walk around here just to see what I've got done. Everything has been painted and cleaned and is pretty much ready to go when this last paint dries to start the reassembly in the next episode. So I hope I can get this thing back together. You can see there's lots of parts and lots of little parts. I hope I'm up to the task. Lots of still pictures at the end of this video, so check them out as well. And you can see the shop is a mess. Tools everywhere, parts everywhere. I think I'll do a clean up and a pick up now and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.